my business was not ready for any of that. But there's nobody out there telling me your business is not ready yet. If you tell anybody, especially right now in this culture that we're all in right now where anything is possible and we can do anything and we're badass bosses that can do anything, you can't tell me what I can or can't do. So if I come here and tell you your business is not ready to grow on YouTube, your business is not ready to grow on TikTok even, your business is not ready for 10,000 followers right now, you still need to figure out who you help. And the fact that you are helping them, that it actually helps, like that your thing is working, that needs to happen first. You're listening to Yo Quiero Dinero, a personal finance podcast for the modern Latina. I'm your host, Janice Torres Rodriguez, personal finance expert, speaker, writer, and business coach. I teach women of color how to build wealth and gain financial independence through side hustles and investing. On this show, we're serving up POC-friendly personal finance knowledge always with a side of sass. We're talking about how to make dinero, how to keep it, and how to make it grow. If you're ready to become poderosa with your dinero, you've come to the right place. Imagine living the lifestyle you've always dreamed because of a blog. Blogging made it possible for me to walk away from my nine to five at age 36 Now I earn over $100,000 a year in passive income, and I'm ready to show you how to do the same. My signature course, the Jumpstart Your Blog Bootcamp, is enrolling soon. In the course, I'm gonna teach you how to turn your passion into a profitable blog that helps you earn from anywhere. Even if you're clueless about tech, you've never built a website before, and you're convinced that nobody's actually going to care about what you're writing about. See, this is the thing. I didn't actually believe that you could make money from anywhere doing something that you love until it became my reality. I've perfected the art of blogging over the last nine years and because of it, I was able to walk away from my corporate career at the age of 36. I dreamed of having a location independent lifestyle that would allow me to earn money from anywhere in the world and that's exactly what ended up happening, but it didn't come without a lot of mistakes, a lot of burnout and honestly a lot of wasted time. So I said to myself, you know, if I could do this all over again, what would you do differently? And that's exactly how I've built my course. If you've ever told yourself, oh, well, I'd love to start a blog, but I have no technical skills, so there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. I'm a busy parent and have a nine to five. I don't have time or I don't know how to narrow down a niche. I love all the things or maybe even isn't blogging dead. I feel like it's too late to do this. (laughs) (laughs) I promise you what's actually holding you back is you're probably afraid to put yourself out there and you don't think anyone will care about your content. You're afraid of failing, investing your dreams and putting your voice out there. You're afraid of doing things wrong and wasting time and money. And those questions and fears are common, but they're stopping you in your tracks. What if you never launch your blog? Your message deserves to be shared. You can help people by using your blog to share the expertise you've learned along the way and you can get paid for it. The Jumpstart Your Blog Bootcamp is enrolling soon. Join the waitlist by heading over to yoquierodineropodcast.com slash blog waitlist, and I'll see you soon. Before we hop into today's conversation, I want to remind you to follow us on social. If you're loving this podcast and you want more community, you want to find out more about our events and all the stuff that we have going on behind the scenes, You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and everywhere else you love to hang out on the internet. If you're loving this podcast, please take a moment to leave us a review if you listen to us on Apple. It's the easiest way to share our podcast with people that you know and love, and it helps us get discovered by amazing listeners like you. So take a moment, leave us a review, share us with your friends and family, subscribe so that you never miss an episode, and make sure to check out our blog, YoQuieroDineroPodcast.com, where you can sign up for our email list and you'll never miss an episode. Plus, you get exclusive invitations to our live events, special discounts for our digital courses, and as always, our best personal finance tips and advice to help you be poderosa with your dinero. Thanks for listening. Now, let's get into the episode. Ina, welcome to the podcast. I am so excited to have you here. 
I wanted to bring you on the podcast because there's a lot of content creators who follow my platform and they're like convinced that the only way that they can have a successful business is as they have a million followers. And so we're debunking a lot of that BS today because I want to talk about how you've been able to grow a six figure business with a small following. And I'm not saying that, you know, as a insult, it's just like, that's the fact that a lot of the things that we think we need to focus on to be successful in business is artificial vanity metrics. So before we dive into your very inspiring story, I want to have you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you, and let's find out kind of why you ended up as a business coach. I'd love to know more about that. So I'm a business coach and I specialize in monetizing tiny audiences, but I didn't always start out wanting to be a coach. It was not a thing for me when I quit my job four years ago. Same. <laughs> I had a very nice, comfortable setup, six-figure salary. I was a software project manager. I had been doing what I did for 15 years. I knew exactly what I was doing. I was really, really good at it. So good, in fact, that on my last few months in the company, I was nine months pregnant and my boss pulled me into his office and he said, he started picking my brain about a certain problem that they were having with a client. And I started telling him, well, this is what I would do. And he said, okay, I want you to stop doing what you're doing. Stop your job and just do this. Like now, this was like a Thursday. And I'm like, you know, I have a full-time job, right? Like you want me to stop doing what I'm doing full-time right now? He's like, yes, I need you on this. So me, Ina, the star, right? I go and I hired a contractor to backfill my old position like the next day, right? I hire another contractor to follow me around, to shadow me while I fix this problem for the company because I'm about to pop, right? I'm about to go on maternity leave. So I hired a contractor to follow me so that the work wouldn't be wasted. And about three weeks later, I had solved the problem for the company. The fire was put out. My boss decided to announce to the entire company that I was being given this promotion. I was going to be the new implementations manager for the entire company. They announced it to the company. They showed the new org chart. I'm right there on their C-suite. I'm like, amazing, right? Okay, now that the fire is out, let's talk about this because you just gave me a promotion but you didn't give me a salary increase. Mm. And this is 2017. This is the year of Me Too. And mm -hmm. the company had been going through a lot of pains because of it, right? Because they had identified there were men with slightly different titles than women just so that they could get paid more, right? Even though they were doing the same job, that kind of thing was happening. So I sat down with my boss. I'm like, okay, you need to do this right. If you're going to give me this promotion, it's got to come with a salary increase. And he starts telling me how this is not really a promotion. I was doing project management before, and I'm doing project management now. So same skill set, therefore, same thing, right? And I'm like, wow. yeah, no. Like, I wasn't, <laughs> I, I'm not just out of college. I wasn't just born yesterday. So I sat down with him. And I told him, I explained to him, like he's a five-year-old, you realize this position comes with more visibility, higher risk bigger teams. It's a bigger problem for the company, like way more. You see how this is a promotion, right? And he just kind of looks at me and goes, oh, you're going on maternity leave anyway. And I was like, I was shocked. I was like, is, is this okay? So it turned out that by then I had already been making websites on the side and I had happened to make a website for an employment lawyer. So I went to my client and I'm like, so this happened. Is this legal? And it's like, actually, no, it is not legal to withhold promotion or salary increases to women who are going on maternity leave. But how far do you want to take this? And I'm here like Joan of Arc, right? And my mother and my husband are like, can you please just have your baby? Like they were afraid for my health, you know, for my well-being, for the amount of stress that going into a legal battle would be. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to take the right choice for me, for my baby, for my body, for my family, and I will deal with this when I get back. So I went on maternity leave. 
and determine that, you know, when I come back, we're going to talk about the salary increase and it's going to be retroactive. Like we're not, you know, we're dealing with this. So I get a call about eight weeks into my maternity leave because they've decided that the male contractor that I hired to shadow me and to backfill me was doing such a great job that he should keep that job. And if I wouldn't mind going back to what I was doing before the promotion. Wow. And that's when I was like, I know who I am. You clearly don't know what you have here. So I talked to my husband. We looked at our finances and we said, you know what? It would make sense for me to not work for about a year before we need the money again. Like we really took a hard look at our finances. So I went back in effective immediately. I quit the job right after maternity leave. And I got my ducks in a row, got myself a business coach. And this iteration of my business started. And my husband is like, so it's great that you're going to be able to stay home and take care of the baby for like an entire year. I'm like, but you know, I'm starting a business, right? I'm also going to be like doing a thing. And he's like, yeah, but you're taking care of the baby, right? I'm like, oh yes, honey, God. I'm taking care of the baby, but I'm also starting a business. So that's kind of how I landed here. And it was through really working with my coach and really getting to know a lot more people in the industry, really figure out what coaching really was. Because it mm -hmm. was not in my realm. I thought I wanted to just create an online course and become rich off of just selling it. I didn't have to do anything. I was just going to live a life of passive income and like I'm on vacation perpetually and getting paid for it. That's not how business works. Yeah, so wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> it would be amazing. So that was kind of like my first year realizing that coaching is where you actually get to help people and see mm. the results and really figure out what it is that you want to do. And that was four years ago. And that's kind of how I got started. Wow, that's an amazing story. And first of all, kudos to you for standing up to that trash ass employer, because I feel like so many of us, especially like Latinas, women of color, we're taught to be grateful. Right. We're taught to not advocate for ourselves, that it's somehow disrespectful. It's it's just like the only thing that's disrespectful is the fact that these jobs think that they can pay you less for more work because I've had the same exact thing happen to me. Right. I mean, yeah. I was done being grateful. Like <laughs> by this point, and you have to understand, if this has happened in my first couple of years working, no way I would have stood up to anybody, right? Yeah. And it happened. I was maybe like four years into working. I wanted to move to Massachusetts because this is where my sister was and she was having a baby and all these things. So I talked to my employer who very nicely allowed me to move to Massachusetts and keep the same job, but they didn't give me an increase for cost of living. I didn't go and fight it. I was grateful. This is your decision. So you do whatever you want. I'm like, yes, thank you so much. That is great. Thank you. And perpetually from that point forward, I was behind in pay than all of my peers in the same area doing the same thing because I took that cut. And every promotion that I would get from then on was based on the salary I was making before, not based on the market rate. So at one point I did have to go in and renegotiate. And when I talked to my boss, I'm like, do you, do you see that I'm not paying the same as everybody, not getting paid the same as everybody else? He said, yeah, I noticed that. And I thought that was weird. I'm like, you do realize you have full power to fix these things, right? Like they just felt like they were pulling one over me and that that was okay somehow. If we don't speak up, none of these things happen. I ended up after that negotiation with a 12% salary increase because like they had to adjust it. It was not even fair or market anymore. So we got to stand up for ourselves, man. Absolutely. It's a must. Okay. So there's a lot of folks who want to do what you did, leave their corporate careers and find that thing. So how did you first decide that coaching was going to be the thing for you? Like I said, it took me like six to eight months, six to eight months, most of my first year of being out on my own to realize that coaching might even be a possibility, right? I thought, let me create the online course. Let me sell it. Let me... What was the course going to be about? 
Oh, I made it. The course oh, exists. Yes. Okay. I okay. sold four copies of that course <laughs> and never talked about it again. And it was an amazing course, by the way. It was a course on teaching you how to create a WordPress site. Okay. And it was mm -hmm. amazing. But I didn't do any market research for it. I just came in and I said, I am smart. I'm smarter than all of y'all. Right. So I'm just going to put my brain into a course because I know how, because I have tech savvy. I didn't even have to hire anybody to do anything. I could do everything myself. And turns out that nobody wanted. I just had no idea what that market was. Now, since then, I have met people who have made that niche work. Right. Mm -hmm. I interviewed on my podcast, Julia Taylor, who's the boss of the Geek Pack, and she teaches people how to create WordPress sites from scratch. And like, see, there's that market for that. But that's not where my heart would have been. That's not really what I wanted to do. I didn't even know that was a possibility. I was not doing it right. It wasn't until one person told me that I really needed to start helping people one-on-one -on -one just to figure out what it is that they wanted. And at first I was following all the advice that everybody would give me because I didn't know anything. So I had a coach who told me, to let go of the technical stuff. They're like, they can go to Fiverr and hire somebody for $5 an hour to do what you do. You got to focus on the business coaching. So I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I'm just going to do the business coaching. And I got a couple of clients where I said, no technical help is included. I'm just going to give you business coaching. And to me, it was like nails on a chalkboard because they would come to my meetings and be like struggling with their website and struggling to set up systems. And I'm here like, I want to help you, but you didn't pay me for it. Like, I feel like that's the worst thing that we can do to ourselves, especially starting out, is restricting what we can do, is putting these random stipulations and parameters on what we can offer because somebody didn't pay me for that or that it's not scalable. It's like, why are we even talking about scale when we haven't even grown anything, right? So when I realized just a few months later, I'm like, I can't keep doing this to people, to keep watching them struggle with the tech when I could just be very easily helping them with it. So I started promoting a different kind of one-on-one -on -one experience, which was, listen, I can make websites like it's nobody's business. Like it's, it's nothing to me. It's like setting up a landing page to me, right? Sending up a landing page is not something that should cost you like $15,000 to put together. It's something that comes so easily to me. So I started offering one-on-one -on -one business coaching with, at the end, will create your website and it will be perfect. And it'll be exactly what you want because we're talking about the business. Because that's one thing that freelancers were missing is that you can hire somebody to make exactly what's in your head. But by the time that project is over, you will have changed your mind. You will not know exactly who you're serving. You will not know what the purpose of the website was. And that's how so many website projects just went down the rails. So it just went off the rails. So I started offering that. And then I was able to scale that program that was working. And I turned it into a group program where entrepreneurs came in. I gave them all the business advice. They figured out their business. And then we would create their website. I even ended up, instead of me making the websites, I had interns who would come who wanted to learn more about creating WordPress sites. And I would mentor them to create them. It was a beautiful experience. And that's what got me to my first six figures, is actually stepping into what my expertise was and giving it to the people who wanted it. And this was in 2020. 2020 was my biggest revenue year to date. It was insane the amount of money I was making. But there was a problem. And that is that I didn't get to keep any of that money. Ooh, let's talk about that. What happened? <laughs> so I know that a lot of people are going to relate to this because you said in the beginning, you know, we all think that we need a million followers to follow us in order to sell anything, right? I thought so too. I thought I need to be growing my audience. This has to be a thing. So what did I do? I started buying courses, right? Let me buy a course on Facebook ads. Let me buy a course on growing on YouTube. Let me buy a course on growing on Facebook pages. There was a one point where I was invested in probably like seven different programs, synchronous and asynchronous all at once. And that's where all my money was going. So mm. can I ask a question? Please. Before you started focusing on building your audience, how were you getting these clients? A lot of them 
were people that I already knew um. or that had seen me speak somewhere. Hmm. So I had started back then, like this is two, three years ago, I went to an event at Staples. Uh, Staples is the office store and it's actually based in Massachusetts. So they try a lot of new stuff right here in Massachusetts. They started having podcasting studios in Staples stores and they started that here in Massachusetts. So I went to an event at a Staples store and they were giving us a tour of the pilot, the pilot room where they were testing podcasting. And it was literally like a closet with padding on the walls and a couple of microphones and a computer. That's all it was. And this was back in 2019. So I saw that and I thought, I will reach out to Staples and see if they're interested in partnering up. So I gave them a call and I said, hey, I saw that you have your starting podcasting studios. Would you be interested in somebody coming in and teaching classes to people on how to create amazing content for their podcast, right? Not necessarily how to use the studio, but how to create a podcast. Because at that point, you had already established your podcast. I have been podcasting since 2012. This is okay. my current podcast, The Global Phenomenon, which you were in and everybody has to go and listen <laughs> to that episode. This is my fourth podcast to date. So podcasting is, again, it's another thing that I just do, right? Mm -hmm. So I told them, like, are you interested in this? And they said, absolutely. So they didn't pay me, but they just gave me the room for free and they would promote it on their website that there's podcasting classes happening and I would get to keep all the proceeds from those classes. Uh, so I went and I created my own stage, essentially. So I would go on and promote it. I even own the domain. I don't teach these classes anymore, but I so don't want to let go of the domain, podcastingclassesinboston.com. And I created a Facebook page where I have over 50 reviews of people taking these classes. So people would come and watch me and I would tell them, what is it that I do? And they would come and sign up to work with me. So it was purely like just me getting out there, meeting people. It was local. One of my clients that year did find me through YouTube when I had like 10 followers. I think I have 65 <laughs> followers now, to like 65 subscribers on YouTube. She found me on one of my YouTube videos and she signed up to be a one-on-one -on -one client. So I was finding them like that. It's just getting to know people, keeping and in so touch with people. You thought after doing the organic marketing that had been successful, that signing up for multiple courses about how to be fabulous on social media was somehow going to help you exceed your success. It doesn't make any sense that <laughs> I was making money, right? A lot of money by doing what I was doing already. And then I would go and I would just drop all of my money into all of these courses and programs and coaches. And I'm like, it didn't hit me at the time because we all hear, if you're not investing in your business, you're not serious about your business, right? You put the money out there and the universe will pay it back to you three times over, right? Those were the beliefs I was buying into. It wasn't until an entire two years later that I reached the bottom of the barrel. I was working with a coach who was a high price coach, nothing against her. There should be coaches at every price point. It was all on me for signing up for a coach that I, I could not, I could not afford it. But I thought to myself, no, no, no. If I work with her, the money will come and it will pay for itself in like multiples. So at the end of that year, this was the end of 2020, right? I just made the most money in my business. And it was my final payment to that coach. And I didn't have the money. I didn't have the money. I went up to her. I told her, I can't pay you. You guys have any idea? Like, especially for somebody, I consider myself to be very smart, very resourceful. I've been able to make a business in these past three years, right? Without working full time. I've been successful, quote unquote. Why am I broke? So I went back to the coach. I told her, I can't pay you. I don't have the money. And she came back. She's like, well, why don't you ask for a loan from PayPal? And at this point, Janice, I am in so much debt because of everything I was investing in. 
that I'm like, I don't want to get into more debt. And she's like, well, what are you going to do? You have to pay me. Again, nothing against her. This is all me. Okay, this is my problem. So my choices were to call PayPal and request another loan and get more into debt or to ask my own husband for money. I don't know about you, but when you have prided yourself in creating something, in being a content creator, in being awesome, in being featured in stages, in telling your husband that your business is self-sufficient while he's asking you, when are you going back to work, right? <laughs> asking him for money is the last thing that you want to do, mm -hmm. okay? So I sat right here where I'm sitting right now. I turned off the call with my coach and I sat here and I deliberated should I be asking my husband for money? And the answer was no, I can't. I can't. I cannot ask him for money. This would be the final nail in the coffin. This would be shame, way too much shame. So I picked up the phone and I called PayPal and I went through their application process and they told me you'll get an email with a response. And I got an email the next day telling me that my loan had been declined. Not because my credit is bad, because my credit is excellent. I have amazing credit. But because as a coach, I make money in spurts during my launches. I don't have a salary. I don't have continuous payments that come to my account. And they thought that my recurring income was not enough to be able to pay for that loan. So I went and I asked my husband for money. How did that conversation go? <laughs> Because my husband is the nicest guy in the world, it was worse in my head than it was in real life. Mm. He said, of course, honey, how much do you need? Yeah, sure. Here you go. Yeah, I'm rooting for you. Right? <laughs> so that's me just being extremely lucky having this man by my side who supports me no matter what. But that told me I was so angry by the end of that year. I was angry at myself. Like, how did I get things get to this point? And why am I investing in all this crap when I know that what I'm doing already is working? I'm making money. So 2020, at the end of 2020, I actually wrote a really angry letter to all of my followers, to all of my subscribers, angry, telling them, like, I'm done doing what everybody else is telling me to do. That's it. I'm done. And in January, I cut off every tool and resource and coach that I wasn't using, everything. I just like expenses all the way down. I got myself the Profit First book by Mike Michalowicz, right? And I read that thing. And 2021 was the year where I was 30% profitable. But I was able to actually keep my money and go and pay down my debt. And now I'm on my way to paying all of my debt by the end of this year. And I just can't believe that that had to happen to me. If I had just known, if somebody's listening to this and they're starting their journey, just hear me out. Test what is it that you're doing. If it's working, great. If it's not working, it's not working. There is no <laughs> point in continuing to sink money into stuff that doesn't work just because you hope that it will later on because somebody else told you because you saw that somebody had a great testimonial on that program, right? For many of us, I want to say like, because it's the 80-20 rule, right? For any program that you see out there, 20% are going to do amazing. 80% of us, that will have not been the right choice for us to make at that point. It's like we're almost investing in programs that we feel like we need, but we don't really. Like we need it maybe like a year down the line, but we don't want to miss out because the price is going to go up, right? Because the cart closes and they don't open up for another year. So I have to buy it now. Let go and make decisions on what you need right now. And you're going to grow so much faster and you're going to be profitable. Just profits matter. Mm. Y'all, I hope that you play this episode back because there are so many gems in your story, Ina, that I think, let's break down a couple of them. First off, I'm curious if this is accurate. 
Do you feel like part of the pressure that you felt to make these investments was because of you potentially comparing yourself to other people? Hmm. <laughs> I think you can say that about every single decision that I've ever made in my life. It's just comparing myself to other people. Yes. To this day, like comparison is just a dream killer. And it's a complex relationship that we have with the people that we compare ourselves to because it's normally people that we admire. It's normally people that when we first run into them, we are so inspired by them. And then the more we're kind of in our own head and in our own process and realize that our success is not matching theirs, the more we start to grow that resentment that has nothing to do with them. They are still amazing and worthy of following and worthy of learning from, but we start to just kind of eat ourselves on the inside because we're not, our success is not the same. When everybody has heard this before, that you're comparing your chapter one to their chapter 10, right? We all know that rationally. But when I was seeing my mentors, I'm like, I'm just trying to see, okay, what is it that they're doing that I should be doing? And guess what it is? Is Facebook ads, is growing on YouTube, is, and I'm like, my business was not ready for any of that. But there's nobody out there telling me your business is not ready yet, right? If you tell anybody, especially right now in this culture that we're all in right now where anything is possible and we can do anything and we're badass bosses that can do anything, you can't tell me what I can or can't do. So if I come here and tell you your business is not ready to grow on YouTube, your business is not ready to grow on TikTok even, right? Your business is not ready for 10,000 followers right now. You still need to figure out who you help. And the fact that you are helping them, that it actually helps, like that your thing is working, that needs to happen first. So there's nobody out there telling you that. Everybody's telling you, of course you can do it. If they can do it, so can you. Yes, but if you actually want to be successful, there's got to be a path there. Not everything right now get rich on TikTok overnight. It just doesn't <laughs> happen that way. So I right. really feel like we need to grow a little bit more patience and mm. longevity thinking with our businesses. Absolutely. I think it goes back to this thing, this trend, if you will, that I see a lot of people engaging in that they're like thinking five steps ahead when they haven't even taken the first step, right? So like one of the big questions I get is, do I open an LLC? And I'm like, have you made any money? Have you actually solicited dollars from a human being for a service and they've actually paid you for that? No. So why are you worried about filing a business structure with the IRS or with your state? Or why are you thinking about these things when like you haven't even made a single dollar? Yeah. Like, what's the business idea? Where's the proof of concept? Yeah. And it's like, I feel like those checklists that we get of like how to start a business, they miss the big point, which is, first of all, why are you doing this? Yeah. Why are you doing this? If you're trying to start a business to get rich, go do something else, please. <laughs> go play the lottery because this is not something that you do for mm -hmm. financial security and satisfaction right away. There has to be a greater why? Yeah. And you know this. I mean, your path to where you are now. I mean, this has been almost a decade in the Absolutely. making, right? I remember in our conversation, you mentioned that the first couple of years of your blog, you weren't reeling in the money, right? But still, no. you were there two years later, still creating these blog posts, still finding out about SEO, still putting it out there. Two years, yeah, right? So, and that is one thing that I want to say it out loud in case anybody relates to this. During our first year in business, because we're comparing ourselves to everybody and everybody has been doing this forever, it seems like we have a fire to put out. It's like, I have to get to 10K months in three months. Otherwise, my business doesn't work, right? And that's how programs are sold. Again, I don't want to go and shame any program. You guys, I'm a business coach. I have a program. I want you to buy my program, right? But so does everybody else. So it's not about whether the offer is good, whether that person is charging too much or charging too little. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with what is it that you need 
right now. That person is doing their job at marketing their offer as best as they can and making you feel like this is the one solution that you need. You just got to be an educated consumer of these products online and to realize that no marketing technique can make you do anything or give you the success that you're looking for. Or Because I was investing in them like a lottery ticket. Like I was like, okay, these things I have tried have not worked. Therefore, oh, maybe it's that YouTube. I'm great on video. Let's do that. Two months later, I haven't scratched module one, right? And it's like, okay, so that didn't work. What else am I going to do? Figure out what it is that you need right now and do that. Everything else can wait. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's this idea that just by signing up for a program or a course or a coach, that that's magically going to make things happen. At the end of the day, it's up to you to start doing the thing that you're being told to do and trying it, right? I always tell people like, clarity does not come from just sitting around and like trying to think about what the best case scenario is and what's going to happen. Clarity comes through action. You need to figure out what works by doing the shit that doesn't work. Yes. <laughs> yes. I say that exact thing all the time. Like people tell me, well, I'm going to sign up to work with a mindset coach because I feel like I need to build my confidence before I can start. And I'm like, you are just delaying. You're just stalling because confidence doesn't come from like you thinking about it a little bit harder. Confidence comes from you taking action and seeing that it works or that it doesn't. So I'm like, I could talk about this all day long. I, <laughs> I just need, if, if anybody's going to take anything out of this, I just want them to really think about what is it that they need? What do they need right now? Do they need clients? Do they need the money to invest in something? Do they need, like, just do it. Just, just yeah. do that thing right now. Do it messy. Do it for free. MailChimp is free. You do not need to go and sign up for Kajabi on day one because Ina uses Kajabi, right? Go and get yourself a MailChimp account and start emailing people. Don't worry. If you ever want to migrate from one system to another, that company that you're migrating to, oh, they'll help you. They <laughs> want your business. They probably have a million tutorials on how you can do that. Don't worry about that. Just start right now. Just whatever it is, just start it now. Yes, I love that. Okay, so for the brand new online business owner who is ready to start actually making money and they don't have a large following, but they want to be profitable before they get to 10K. What's your advice? I'm going to tell you what the advice is not to post more. If oh, not. you mean we shouldn't follow Gary Vee's advice about posting four TikToks a day? <laughs> don't like posting more it's not your getting clients fast strategy. I just wanted to say that because every time that I ask someone, what do you think you need to be doing to get clients? Answer number one is, oh, I need to post more. I need to be more consistent with my post. No, no, it's not. That's not it. Step one, you need to be talking to people and not just anybody, talking to the right people. So have an idea. Okay, start with an idea. You're going to start somewhere. Start with an idea. What do you want to help people with? Just one thing that you can, okay? I'm not saying that you're going to be known for this and do your TED Talk on this, okay? I'm just saying, what can you help someone with right now, okay? And I'm telling you, just answering this question is going to get rid of that imposter syndrome that, oh, but I haven't been doing it that long, so how will people pay me if I don't have any testimonials? Forget about it. What can you help people with? You know what I'm amazing at? I can make a website like it's nobody's business, right? So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and charge people for making websites. That's how I started, right? The first website I made, by the way, was free. I went down to my local diner and I said, hi, I love your fresh squeezed orange juice. And I was wearing a blazer. And I would like to propose that I make your website for free. And uh, yeah, what do you think? And they're like, who are you? But they said, yes. I took my time because it was not work for pay or whatever. I just took my time. I put together a nice site for them. It had a nice video. I went there and I would order food so I could take nice pictures of it. And I posted it. And then I posted it on Facebook. I said, look at you. Look at what I did. Look at what I made. And then I got my first referral. 
to go and make a website for a church in Marathon, Florida, of all places, because their webmaster disappeared. You guys, I got so much business because webmasters just like disappear. There's a Bermuda triangle of webmasters out there that I was banking on. Like it was a gold mine. Did your webmaster disappear? Come and I'll help you out. Right. I started doing that. It wasn't the thing that I wanted to do forever. Right. But I started just making money and getting myself experience on these technical tools. Right. Started there. Then, okay, what about the business coaching part? Well, by then I had learned so much about online marketing, about all the things that we all learned. I was consuming all of that content. I'm like, I feel like I could help someone with this. I'm not going to claim to be like the absolute expert on online marketing, but for people who are starting, I definitely have some thoughts that could help them. And that's how my first coaching package started, right? So you just start by doing, and the more you help people, the more you get the testimonials. And I'm going to say something that is kind of abstract, and I'm hoping that it relates to someone out there. We keep thinking that we just need to create a product or a service, and somebody's going to buy it, and then we just need to sell more of that thing, right? Which makes sense. That's how businesses work. What we are forgetting is the helping people part, right? Like, we don't even think about that. We think, I'm going to create a package, people are going to buy it, and then more people are going to buy it, and then I'm going to be rich. When it took me probably a couple years into coaching to realize that I was so focused on the growth and scale that I was like, you know what? I feel like I could actually be doing more for my clients. There are things that I've been holding back on. And you know what? My next client, I'm going to do everything I can to get them to be successful. I mean, that just change in mentality, like putting myself in their shoes and being like, you know what? We are going to do this together and you are going to succeed because we have no choice because with your skills and my brain, we're going to do this together. It completely changed the game for me. Now, where, where I thought of myself as somebody who was very logical, very strategic, now people started to see me as somebody who really cared, right? That's something that growing up, I would see people that were very, very motherly, right? I would see them like, like they're like a mama hen. And you know who that person is in your life. You talk to them and you feel like, man, this person just envelops you with love every time they talk to you. I never saw myself as someone like that because I was always very pragmatic and very logical and very direct. When I started really pouring my heart and soul into my clients' businesses, they started to see me that way. And it was a beautiful thing that is just going to make me cry. Like they started to see me as somebody who like could actually help them. I'm like, yes, like, yes, that's what I've been trying to get to all along. But the more you hold back because that person is not paying for that particular service or because no, that's not how you sold it to them. The more you hold back, Put yourself in a box, the more of a disservice you're doing to the people who are paying you to work with you. So I would say like the main thing that you need to be doing to start, meet the people that you can help, offer to help them genuinely and really pour your entire self into it without caring how much money you're making in that first engagement. It's not about you replacing your salary that first month. It's about building your confidence, getting people to realize that they do need you and like putting something out that people want. So that's what I have to yes. say about your first year. That is fantastic advice. Thank you so much for sharing. I think another thing that people tend to get caught up in is like, where do I show up to actually find my people, right? Because do I need a TikTok and a Twitter and a Facebook and a freaking, what's that clubhouse? I don't even know if people use that shit anymore. Like, how do I know where to show up? I would say start with a place that you feel most comfortable. You don't start from zero on an Instagram account if you've never been on Instagram before right? So if you just have your immediate network on Facebook, start on Facebook, right? If you have been spending all your time on Instagram and that's where everybody who knows you follows you, you start there. Uh, we've somehow convinced ourselves that getting a new client only counts if it was a complete stranger, right? 
it doesn't count if it was somebody that you already knew. Like, it doesn't count. And I hear this all the time. It's like my clients will come to me and be like, so I got five signups for my masterclass, but three of them are like friends of mine. But two of them are people that I didn't meet before. I'm like, why are we making that distinction? Why are your friends second class citizens? Right? Why is that? Your first clients are going to be people that you already know. So if you keep thinking that way, that those people don't count or that those people don't want to hear from you or those people are not going to need you, you're shooting yourself in the foot. That's why you haven't had clients all year. It's because you keep thinking that it's got to be strangers. Otherwise, it doesn't count. It doesn't work that way. That website that I was telling you about, the one in Marathon, Florida, didn't come from a stranger. It was my husband's uncle who saw me post about the website on Facebook and told me, hey, I'm going to introduce you to someone, right? So I'm not saying post with the intention of getting your granny to buy from you. But guess what? If granny is really active on social media, she might reshare you and reach somebody else. So your people are where your people are right now. Start there. That's amazing advice. And I don't know about you, but I feel like when you have that personal connection to somebody, it's even more gratifying when you can help them because you get to experience that in a way that maybe just like somebody who's on the other side of the world, yes, you can help them bring their idea to life, but you don't get that constant connection after a while. Like I had my aunt in my blogging program. I had my cousin. I had my sorority sister quit her job. Like it's amazing, you know, just being able to follow those personal stories and see how you've been able to impact not only, you know, strangers on the internet, but people in your own circle. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's amazing. It's nerve wracking. Oh, hell yeah. (laughs) Right. Because at first you're thinking, no, 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 they're going to think I'm salesy right? They're going to think I'm crazy. I To this day, I have family members who have no idea what I do. And when they bring it up, they say it like, but what is it that you are doing? Like with a, like a the judgy tone? Like, but what? Isn't it like a scam? Like that's a scam, right? Like I've had legit people in my life tell me like, yeah, but marketing is just all a scam anyway. And I'm like, seriously? So those are people I just don't engage with, right? But my cousin actually signed up for a few sessions to work with me to like guide her. And she totally values that. I'm like my own cousin, right? So we have to really start to let go of that. I don't want to sell to my friends and family. Facebook is where my friends and family are. Therefore, I should not be talking about my business on Facebook. No, the other way around. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, it's not an easy concept to warm up to. My first coach told me, you should probably be on LinkedIn and on Facebook because that's where your network is. I'm like, no, that's where my family and friends and co-workers are. No. And she's like, that's kind of the point. That's it. That is the point. And I'm like, no, I can't do that. And my first coaching client came from my LinkedIn and it's somebody that I hadn't talked to in 15 years. She just saw what I was doing and she reached out. I'm like, I had no idea that you were out there. So it wasn't my mom hiring me, but it was somebody that I had no idea was there. And if I hadn't put myself out there, they would never come. So it's nerve wracking. I won't lie. But once you get over it, that's where it's at. Mm. Ina, I love the work that you do. I think it's so needed because there's just so many coaches that focus on the metrics, the 100K, the 10K months, the 10K followers, all of that shit. And I'm just like, look, I was making money with my brand. I still don't have 10,000 followers on my food blog, but it's a six figure fucking business. So let go of this idea that you need to have a certain number of followers to make money. It's trash, y'all. It's trash. It really is. I'm going to tell you, I made it to those six figures without having a thousand followers anywhere. To this day, I do not have a thousand subscribers to my mailing list. I just barely hit a thousand followers on Instagram. I used to have a Facebook group of like 700 people. Like nobody was engaging there. I ended up closing down that thing. To this day, I remove followers if they're not good followers. Like I don't need that number. Trust me. Like the difference between a hundred and 1150 and 1350 is not worth it. That's not where it comes from. You know where I would be banking is your engagement. Is 
talking to people and getting to know people, specifically getting to know people who would be your ideal client. If you're not meeting them in real life, it's almost like you're hoping that they're going to go from follower to client. And that is very rare. If I sit down with you, I want to see your list of leads. I want to know who have you warmed up in your audience and is closer to signing with you. That's the list I care about, not your list of 10,000 fake followers. That means <laughs> nothing to me. You want to make right. money, you need a real list of leads. Yeah. So for folks that want to find out more about you, work with you, get all of the tea and get, I think, what is so needed from the coaching perspective, which is just like the real concrete tools as to how to make this thing work. How can folks find you? Thank you for asking. So I spend all of my time on Instagram. I'm at your engagement coach and always click the link in my bio because that's where you'll see the latest things that I have going on. I actually have a program. It's called Get Clients First, where I have it divided into stages. Stage one, stage two, stage three. You know what stage three is? Is audience growth. Not even, it didn't even make it to stage one or stage two. There's so much more that you need to be doing there. Okay. So I usually promote a masterclass that you can see in the link in my bio. Okay. But right now, if you want to really get to start to get to know people, I sat down and I put together a list of 100 engagement post ideas so that you can stop thinking to yourself, I just need to post more. I want you to be in the driver's seat of your engagement. And you can do that through posts. So you can actually satisfy your, I need to be posting more with your, I need to be engaging more real, real mandate. So all you have to do is go to 100 postideas.com. And that's the number 100 postideas.com. Download that completely free guide and get started getting to know your people. And I hope that if you find me on Instagram, you will send me a DM and tell me that you heard about this here from Janice's podcast. And then we can start a conversation. Actually, you'll see what it's like to talk to someone and not feel like you're being sold to all the time because engagement is a really, really important part of you getting clients out there. So we can talk about it over the DMs. But your engagement coach, I will see you there on Instagram. So I noticed you're also doing a free masterclass coming up this month. So tell us about it and how folks can register. Yes. So this class is my pride and joy. I call it Get Clients with a Tiny Audience. And you know those classes that you go to and you don't really learn anything because they're just telling you the you know why and not the how. And the, you walk out and you're like, they just told me things that I already knew. This class is not that. This class is going to completely reframe the way that you see getting clients with a small audience because the truth is with a big audience and with a small audience is different techniques. It just is. So I come here and I welcome you into the universe of monetizing a tiny audience. So if anybody's interested, all you have to do is go to tinyaudiencemasterclass.com and sign up there. If you're listening to this way later and the class already happened, I teach it year round. It comes up every couple of months. So make sure that you get yourself on that wait list so that you can get notified when it pops up again. So tinyaudiencemasterclass.com is an amazing class. You will start really getting to know your people after that class. I love that. I'm going to sign up too, because you know what? You can never learn too much as a fellow business coach. So, you know, thank you so much for what you do. I think you serve a very unique niche in our community and we need more folks who are not focusing on the metrics and the BS, but actually helping folks bring these brilliant ideas that they have to life. Thank you so much, Denise. This was super fun and I can't wait to meet all of your listeners over in my DMs. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you are ready to take your dinero to the next level, sign up for our free 14-page guide, The Financially Lit Latina, the ultimate blueprint for becoming poderosa with your dinero. This 14-page guide includes our best tips on money mindset, budgeting, debt repayment, career, investing, financial independence, side hustles, and more. And you can get it completely free. So to get your copy of the Financially Lit Latina, just head over to YoQuieroDineroPodcast.com slash start. That's YoQuieroDineroPodcast.com slash start and start transforming your dinero story today. Until next time, stay empowered 
stay inspired, and stay poderosa. On the Yo Quiero Dinero podcast and associated entities, all information provided is for general information purposes only and does not constitute accounting, legal, tax, or other professional advice. Listeners should not act upon the content or information found here without first seeking appropriate advice from an accountant, financial planner, lawyer, or other professional. We assume no responsibility for information contained on this podcast and associated entities and disclaim all liability with respect to such information, including but not limited to any liability for errors, inaccuracies, omissions or misleading or defamatory statements. Usage of this podcast and associated contents constitutes an explicit understanding and acceptance of the terms of this disclaimer.